Hi everybody, this is Michael Hildebrand and I'm your host on the Sleep Trust Podcast, where I'm talking about how to gain back trust in your ability to have a superb sleep again. In this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast, we are going to talk about jet lag. Uh, and jet lag is the nasty little feeling that we get when we travel over more than two time zones that can keep us awake when we should and want to fall asleep and that can make us tired at daytime when we want to be fit and concentrated. And the reason that we feel this way is kind of directed through two forces. Uh, the first force is the circadian rhythm, which is the daytime nighttime cycle that takes a little bit to adjust in our body. So at nighttime, our body releases melatonin and our body has an inner clock that gets used to when it should be nighttime. So when this shift happens too quickly, our bodies simply need a little bit to adapt to the new rhythm. And the second force that comes into play here is the homeostatic sleep drive. The homeostatic sleep drive basically works through a hormone called adenosine. And the longer we are up, the more adenosine builds up in our brains and this makes us tired. So when we, when we experience a time shift, this also kind of gets out of sync. And what you are at least highly likely to ex experience is that your body gets a little bit confused when it comes to the inner time matching the outer time. So let's just pretend that you are somewhere where it is now nighttime and it would be time to go to bed, let's say 11 p.m. But where you are coming from, it's still daytime. So your inner clock is telling you it's still daytime. The outer clock is saying it's time to go to bed. And this can lead in your body to the feeling that you're not tired yet and that you cannot fall asleep. On the other side, it may be daytime in your new location. Let's say it's 10 a.m you're uh, off to, uh, to a business meeting or maybe you're on holidays, good for you. And 10 a.m. would uh, result in nighttime uh, at the location where you're coming from. So in that case, it's 10 a.m., the sun uh, may be shining, uh, everything, everybody's out, but you are feeling tired because your inner clock is signaling you that it's nighttime. This is basically the confusion that you are experiencing and the results and the effects can be that you uh, are tired or awake at times that you would rather have it the uh, other, uh, the opposite way. And um, you can have a headache, you can experience that you're not concentrated, not focused, you can experience that you're in a bad mood. Uh, you can also experience that your memory is uh, running low, so it's hard for you to memorize uh, new names or other things. And these are typically the things that you can and probably will experience if you have a jet lag. What we can do is not to get rid of that completely, but we can reduce the time that you suffer jet lag uh, by half, at least half. So typically, if you don't do anything, um, you would experience an adaption rate of one day for one to two hours of time zone skipping. So let's say you travel over six time zones, that would take you about four days to adjust if you don't do anything. So if you follow the tips that we're gonna walk through, this is gonna be cut in half. It's only gonna take two days. And the last time I skipped six time zones, I would say it took me one day to adapt in both directions. So it's really valuable uh, and you will enjoy your next travel so much more if you follow the one or the other tip that you're going to get here from me today. And the things I'm going to share with you today, I can really brag around with them because none of them are for me. Uh, I basically got them as a present uh, from different sources out of the internet, from my friends, clients, business partners, and put them to work. And I'm sharing with you what worked for me or what I know worked for others. And before we move on to the practical tips to help you to reduce the adaption rate when you experience a jet lag, I would ask you to consider to visit us at sleeptrust.eu. This is our new website. You'll really love it, I'm sure. You can search all our podcasts there and we have tons of topics. 
We're doing everything that will help you to increase your sleep quality. So you will find podcasts about forgiveness, anger, the sleep triathlon, where we walk through three specific topics that will help you to improve your sleep quality. You will also find things like a bed, a bed assessment, see which sleep type you are, and so on. So tons of information there. I'm sure you will find something that you will find to be valuable in increasing your sleep quality. There would be one thing I would really be thankful for. We have little buttons that enable you to share an article or a podcast on your Facebook profile. It's super easy. You will find the little buttons. You just have to hit them. And that way you can help me help us to spread the message. Of course, only do so with information that you find to be valuable. And if you find information that you think could be better, please don't hesitate. Drop me an email at hello at sleeptrust.eu. That's the email that uh, I will get. And I am really thankful for every feedback that helps us to increase the quality of our content. So let's get started with tip number one. And tip number one is to adjust your inner clock before you travel. So let's say you are going to travel westwards, which is going to make your days longer. Then you will start to adapt your inner clock when you're at home a couple of days before you leave. Uh, you can adapt your inner clock up to an hour a day should work. If you're a little bit sensitive, then start with half an hour a day. For me, an hour a day is okay. So you would typically, let's say you usually go to bed at 10 p.m. You would start to go to bed at 11 p.m. Then you're going to go to bed at 12 p.m. And then you're going to go to bed at 1 a.m which is kind of adjusting your inner clock before you leave. And let's say you have a time shift of six hours. If you adapt your inner clock three hours at home, you've already went the halfway. Traveling eastwards is typically a little bit harder for most people. So if you want to do the same trick there, you have to go to bed earlier. And doing so, you should watch that you get into rooms that are dark because as long as light hits our retina, our bodies are not going to produce melatonin. You have to darken the room, go to bed earlier, and the trick will work the same way. So the next thing that you can actually do is on your journey. When you hit the plane, you want to adjust all your clocks and watches to the destination time zone. That way your mind can kind of get used to the new time and you can act on the plane as if you were living in the new time. Eat to the times that you would at the destination time zone and that way your body can start to adjust. Uh, usually the planes do serve the meals uh, according to the destination time zone and they also kind of adjust the lights in the plane to the destination time zone too. So they're supporting this but if they don't, just in case, have, a, uh, have an eye on that and definitely adjust your time because your mind is going to get used to the new time zone and that's going to be helpful when you land. You also want to be very careful when it comes to napping on the plane. So you want to know exactly what you're doing. Have a look at the destination time zone and ask yourself if you would be napping on a regular schedule to that time. And if not, don't nap. The next things that you can do are actually at your destination. So let's say you traveled westwards, which would make your days a little bit longer. Uh, this is good because you're going to be tired uh, when you arrive. So at some point you're going to fall asleep. And um, what can happen then is that you actually wake up before you should or um, at least should in the new time zone. And if this happens, there are two things that I would recommend doing. First thing would be to try to fall asleep again. Just stay calm and relax in your bed. And if you're lucky, you're just going to fall asleep and everything's going to be okay. The second thing is that if you notice after 20 minutes that this is not going to work, just get up. Uh, if it's already light outside, then uh, try to get into the light. If not, do a couple of exercises and definitely wait with your breakfast until breakfast time because adjusting your meals will give your body additional triggers to adjust to the new time. 
So it's a little bit different when you travel eastwards. Now your days are getting shorter. And with that, when you're in your destination time zone, you may not be tired at bedtime. And this is typically a little bit harder for people to cope with. So there is one thing that is uh, quite common out there, and this is not, not a personal recommendation, but something I want to share with you because I know it is something that many people, uh, that helps many people. And this is to take melatonin. And melatonin is the sleep hormone or one of the sleep hormones, and you can buy it over the counter in the US. So that's one thing that you could do to take melatonin before you go to bed. Uh, the other thing is, that you kind of get into a darkish environment um, before bedtime. So kind of tricking your circadian rhythm, your inner clock through getting into a dark environment, if that's possible, maybe uh, even hours before you go to sleep. And the third thing that you can do is when you uh, stay up a little bit longer and get up on time you may be a little bit tired the next day because if you stay up longer you might not be able to get your eight nine hours of sleep then uh, see that you hit the light as soon as possible uh, the light is a absolute powerful thing when it comes to adjusting your inner clock so when you get up get into a light environment maybe breakfast in the outside if that's possible and uh, that are all things that will help you to adjust your inner clock with the clock time that is in your destination environment. And I personally hate to work with times. It confuses me completely. So there is a tool out there. It's called Jetlag Rooster. I will share the link in the show notes of this week's episode. You just have to visit sleeptrust.eu and you'll find it in the show notes. And this tool does everything for you. All you have to do is tell the tool where you are from, when your flight is going, where you're going to travel to, uh, I think when, when the plane is going to land, and it's going to come up with a complete plan of what you can do. It even asks you if you want to take melatonin or something like that. So that is a great thing to have. And um, now I'm going to share how I practically set things to action because I'm not really good when it comes to getting too sophisticated about these plans. And even though you can download it and print it, and this is really helpful for many people, so definitely check it out. I'm just sharing with you what honestly helps me and what, how I live this. And I don't want to get too sophisticated about it. So I have a look at the, the destination time zone. I have a look at my day. And I typically want to go to bed tired. So that's my goal. And... Um, I would rather fight my way through a day to know that I'm going to be really tired when it comes to bedtime than having a nap in between or stuff like that. And I find my body to adjust so much faster if I do so. So on my last big tip to the yes, that was a time shift, I think, of six hours. I kind of had a six hour longer day and it was it's a journey, you're exhausted, I had to get a car, there were problems getting the, the you know, the rent, rental car, and I was super exhausted. When I arrived in the destination, I got something to eat, and then I still waited till I think 9, 9.30 p.m. till I went to bed, and then I fell asleep. So I didn't go to bed at 7 p.m. or something like that, which I could have done, because I knew that wouldn't have worked. I just pushed to get to that, you know, get to get to the time that I would go to bed at home. And what happened then is that I woke up at around 5 a.m. and I couldn't fall asleep anymore. So at 5.30, I hit Walmart and did a little bit of shopping. And that day went uh, fairly good. In the end of the day, I got a little bit tired, of course, because I didn't have that much sleep. But the day after that, everything was fine. So flying back home, flying eastward was a little bit more tricky. I knew I was to land in Germany in the morning hours and going eastwards, the days get shorter. So I was missing out on six hours. And what I did was to have a look at the destination time zone, of course, as said. And at some point I just ordered, uh, I took the decision, now I'm going to have a nap, try to sleep four or five hours, something like that. And I ordered uh, a little bottle of wine, drank the wine and fell asleep. 
So uh, I did wake up uh, after I think two hours, something like that, and I fell asleep again. But I think in total, I got four to five hours of sleep. Landing the next morning, uh, of course, I wasn't super, super refreshed. But after having four hours of sleep, that's something how uh, I personally can make it through the day. You don't feel as good as if you have eight or nine hours, of course, but I kind of made it through the day, didn't have a nap in between, went to bed on time, 10 p.m., and got up the next morning and everything was fine. So uh, I typically try to be overtired. That's my strategy. I'm playing the adenosine game here and it works fine for me. So you might also want to try that. That's the one single way that I get the adaption rate of my body uh, to uh, peak perform, if you want to say, when it comes to jet lag. And with that, let's wrap up this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast. Jet lag is the bad feeling that you can experience if you travel over more than two time zones. It gets fed by two basic forces, which is the circadian rhythm and the homeostatic sleep drive. Experiencing jet lag can leave you with a headache, with a lack of concentration, a lack of memory and a bad mood. Bringing things to action like pre-adjusting your inner clock before the journey, setting your clocks to the destination time as soon as you hit the plane, drinking enough water and being very careful with naps can really help you to cut your jet lag time in half. The single one thing that works best for me is that I always take care that I am definitely going to be tired at bedtime at my destination time zone. And that's it for this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope you enjoyed yourself and that you can say bye bye to your jet lag and that you tune in next week when we are going to talk about how to have a superb sleep when you're on a travel and sleeping in a hotel. Until then, have a superb Hey there, and thanks for listening to the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to get further information on this podcast or material that will help you to gain back your sleep trust, please check out sleeptrust.eu. That's sleeptrust.eu, where you will get lots of information around sleep. And here comes some legal stuff. Everything on this podcast is my opinion only, so do not take it as an advice as I am not a doctor, nor have I considered your personal situation. If you feel that you need medical advice, please consider getting an appointment at your doctor of trust. If you want to give me any kind of feedback on this podcast, feel free to email me at podcast at sleeptrust.eu. I hope you tune in again next week, and until then, have a good sleep.